And this is what humans need. And you're going to be floored by the third step in this whole process. Self actualization, esteem, love, belonging, safety, uh, physiological. It's bottom up, it's foundational top. Okay? So when you talk about a human being, any human being, I don't care if you're a millennial, I don't care if you're a baby boomer. Any human being, physiological, I need food, I need water. Level one, the foundational stuff of it all is I need the sustenance to survive. Okay, that's level one. Then you go to safety. I need a roof over my head to protect me from the lion. I need protection from the animals or the people, the predators that might come get me. Number two, I think we can all relate to that, but our lives are pretty simple relative to that. Because we usually have plenty of food and we usually have protection from the animals. Look at what number three is. Belongings. Ultimately love, the strongest of emotion. What do you think Harley offers that no other brand offers? Belonging. Family. Bonding. Part of this moment. In this world, where every bit of technology seems to be pulling people apart, you got the average person who 80% of them hate their jobs. They're going to commute to work. What's the average commute this day? 40 minutes? So I'm going to spend, is that right? So I'm going to spend an hour and 20 minutes in a car each day to go to a job to work 8 to 10 hours, a job that I don't like, according to the, the one shift index, that 80% of people hate their jobs. It's like the saddest thing I've ever heard. To go to a job you don't like, and by the way, most people have three people that they stay in contact with at work. They have the two guys in the cubes and the boss they don't like. That's the social outlet of work for most people. Think of your social outlet when you come to work and hang out with one buddies. Social outlet of work for most people is the same three idiots they don't like because they don't like their job. To get in the car, to fight traffic for 40 minutes, to go home and get your feet. They don't have a chance to belong to why do you think kids go off to college and join fraternities and sororities? Because they're somewhere there between a kid and an adult, and they're in that weird space, and they don't know anybody, and it's scary, and they try to act tough. And what do they do? They join a fraternity. Why? Because they have 100 instant friends, and they feel like I belong to something now. It's all around us. You just have to look for it. It's a sense of belonging. This is huge. They want to be part of something. When a person walks in this door, I promise you they want to be part of something. They may also want to have a motorcycle. If you try to sell them a motorcycle, you're missing the entire point. If you try to sell them a sense of belongingness, they will then also buy a motorcycle. It all comes down to this human connection. And sometimes you just need to have a negative happen in your life to do it. It takes you, immediately takes you right to that level. But everything else that I was stressed out about is moving the minutia. It's just about human beings that can walk in the door, that want to be cared for, loved. It's a human desire. It's genetically coded. We seek out people and things that make us feel good. Things are fun, and then the feeling goes away. And the people, that's the long-lasting thing. You talk about this millennial generation. What is it that baby boomers hate about millennials? Their perceived laziness. I agree with you. I read several articles, myth-busting articles about millennials. It's very interesting what we think about millennials and what's actually happening with millennials. They're actually very great millennials. What else? What do baby boomers hate about millennials relative to this right here? Hmm. What about it? Missing out on what's happening right now. The perceived disconnect. The watching the fireworks happening between them. This versus this very different chemical reaction in the brain. Even if I'm talking to you here versus talking to you here, it causes a different chemical reaction in the brain, right? This actually causes friendship, camaraderie, companionship, caring, love. This, this doesn't. So you've got a whole generation who's doing this. And look, and I just made a comment yesterday to a room full of 20 some year olds. I said, I don't blame you. If I would have had that when I was 20, I would have been all over it too. I'm not blaming you. It's really easy for those of us who didn't have it to sit here and judge those who did. But if you had this cool toy that connected to absolutely everything you found cool and interesting in the world, you'd be all over it too at that age. But the fact of the matter is when you're down here, you're, you're filling your bucket of elect.
electronic appeasement and your bucket of human engagement is empty. That's why they say that the millennial generation is the loneliest generation we've ever known. The loneliest. Baby boomer will say, let's go get a cup of coffee in the morning. And a millennial will say, text me in the morning. Right? And the millennial generation is the loneliest generation, and the baby boomer generation is the whatever the opposite of the loneliest generation is. They have fewer friends than millennials, and they have better friends than millennials because of human connection. So here you have a world, whether it's with the phone, whether it's with the car, whether it's with the commute, everything's going so fast in this world, nobody slows down to do anything. And what that's causing is limited exposure of humans to other humans. And the body, physiologically, the body is desperately needing that. And so they come in here to seek that out. Such The cool thing about the transactional data is it tells us somebody was in your store. That's the point of it. Somebody was in your store desperately seeking this. And if you think, if you play on a very short term, I'm only present in the moment. I'm not present for everything else going around me. I just happen to be here and then twirl, right? If you live in that world, then you think the guy's here for a jacket. You think he's here for a new set of exhaust. You think he's here for a helmet. And he's not. He's here for belongingness and connection. And in a motorcycle industry, in a Harley motorcycle industry, Greg, you think anyone's ever going to come tell you that? You think I'm going to walk in and go, dude, I'm really lonely. I don't really have any friends. So can I, can I be part of this cool group? It's never going to happen. I promise you that's what's happening when the guy walks in the door. He's looking for connectedness. He's not looking for a shirt for his wife. That's not what's happening. That's what he tells you what's happening because we're ego-driven and our ego says, that's not cool to say that. I just want to hang out. I'm just going to say, well, I'm just, here. I'm just looking for sure for the wife. Yeah, that's good to see you guys. And that whole ego thing, especially with Harley, especially with men. Okay? That's what's missing. That's what fuels this over here. So now let me give you the history of this. How did we get to this point? Where is your deficiency? And ultimately, that will take us to how do we pinpoint what's going on, what the problem is inside your store? Okay, that's what we're going to set up. Any questions so far? Here's the history of 